We're going to talk about carbon tetrachloride poisoning. This is a chemical that used to be used in dry cleaning. Um, it's not used much anymore because, or at all anymore, because we know that it causes injury and death. Um, but because of its history and the fact that it's been studied extensively, we understand um, pretty well what's going on at the cellular level, and it serves as a good example um, to help you better understand some of the things that cause chemical injuries to cells. First we'll talk about what's going on this at the systemic level and then we'll move behind the scenes and talk about what's going on cellularly. So at the systemic level with um, carbon tetrachloride poisoning, so you have one carbon molecule and four chloride molecules, right? They enter the body, and so they can enter the body through any number of ways, absorption, ingestion, or inhalation. And when they get to the liver, they start to be metabolized. So here's your liver, and inside your liver, you have an enzyme system called your P450 enzyme system. And your P450s break down, so this is your enzyme here in the liver, it breaks down the carbon tetrachloride into carbon trichloride. This is an important step because this particular step is what causes a lot of the problems. Tetra, I mean carbon trichloride is a free radical. So it's got uneven electron charge and it's always looking to steal electrons from anywhere else in order to even out its charge. And what it's doing here in the liver is it's going to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. This is my example of that, it's not great. Um, and it's causing lipid peroxidation. So it's stealing electrons from lipids. And as it's stealing electrons from the lipids, it's causing breakdown in the cell walls, right? And so things can get in and out of the endoplasmic reticulum pretty easily now. So you have free, some free fatty acids here as um, these lipids are breaking down. And you have all these tiny little molecules. Well, you know in chemistry that like dissolves like or absorbs like. And so these are turning into bigger and bigger molecules. Right? And that is occurring inside the liver, creating these, this big fat liver. Okay? And the liver starts to look pale because of all the fat molecules that's in it. Um, simultaneously to this occurring, carbon tetrachloride started breaking down, or bl actually blocking, apoproteins from production. And apoproteins are important um, proteins, and what they do is they take triglycerides and lipids, and they bind them together. But if we don't have that, we can't do that. So these triglycerides and these lipids are not bonding and that's also contributing to the fatty liver. Okay, so lipid peroxidation and the free radical formation occurs in about 10 to 15 minutes of exposure. And then the, the fatty liver starts to occur within about 10 to 12 hours. So we're seeing this happen pretty quickly. Um, and this is the, the big overview. So let's move on and think about what's going on behind the scenes. So at the cellular level, we talked about lipid peroxidation occurring, right? And so that was that smooth endoplasmic reticulum being affected by the free radical CCL3, causing lipids to break down and things are going in and out of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum pretty easily. So we have increased passive diffusion. And so with increased passive diffusion, that means things are going to get into the cells, right? And so some of the things that might get into the cells are calcium, sodium, and water. So all these things are moving into the cell. And that causes the cell to get big, because now we have this cell that's got calcium and sodium and water inside of it. And over time, what can happen is the cell can burst and the cell will die. So that's one way um, that this free radical can cause death in the cell. 
Another way that um, we can have death in the cell is through um, calcium imbalance. So let's say that this cell that's full of calcium and sodium and water doesn't die from bursting because of the swelling. Let's say that um, what happens to this cell is that there's so much calcium inside of the cell. So there's lots of calcium, and the calcium starts affecting the mitochondria. The mitochondria are the little workhorses of the cell, and they provide all of the energy. It affects the mitochondrial metabolism, causing decreased ATP production. So the cell's unable to produce enough energy to, to survive, and so it could die. Or it could affect its enzyme activities and increasing the enzyme activities in the cell. And so we have increased enzyme activities. You're increasing or activating ATPases, proteases, and phospholipases. This causes damage to the nucleus and to the cell wall. And it also causes cell death. Okay. So now we have two ways. We have cellular swelling and we have calcium influx. But also another thing, a third thing that can happen is that we'll go back to the cell that's full of calcium and sodium and water and we'll talk about electrolyte imbalance. So with electrolyte imbalance, um, what's happening here is that you have this cell and inside the cell you have lysosomes. And these lysosomes are affected by electrolytes. And they, when there's an electrolyte imbalance, they start to release lysosomal enzymes. Okay, and these lysosomal enzymes are phagocytic. And so what they are actually doing is they're destroying other organelles. So they might destroy the mitochondria, they might destroy the endoplasmic reticulum, but it's killing off all of the organelles so the cell can't function. And that results in cell death as well. Okay, so you have these three ways that lipid peroxidation contributes to cell death. And it, all of those things are occurring at, simultaneously as um, the liver is starting to accumulate large fat molecules and turn into a big fatty liver. Um, okay, so that's the cellular breakdown. Hopefully you understand how this poisoning occurs now and it makes sense to you.